G'day guys, Peter from Team Low Range 4x4 here, and today I want to do a quick video on raised air intakes, snorkels. Yes, you hear that word quite a lot. I've got a snorkel, I'm getting a snorkel. Different kinds of snorkel, safari snorkel. But they're not, they're not snorkels. They're raised air intakes. Because at the end of the day, you've got your air box, which is in here, and it's plumbed through here and into your raised air air intake and you can have different heads on those I've got a ram air head as it's called um, and there's different positives and negatives to that so on that note actually let's go through the positives and negatives all right guys let's go through the negatives first because you know at the end of the day I want to finish on a high so what are the negatives to getting a raised air intake well I can think of one major one when you do make that choice if you do go down that path it's going to be a permanent one Unlike a lot of other accessories you can get for your four-wheel drive, you can install them and then possibly remove them and on sell them if you need to upgrade or whatever. It's a little bit more difficult when you get this raised air intake. And the main reason is very simple. All right, so here's the air box for my Hilux. And you can see right here on the side, there's this little pipe that runs into the side wall of the engine bay right here and up to the raised air intake. So. If I want to remove my raised air intake, what's that going to do? Well, the very first thing I noticed is there's going to be a couple of screws that are, you know, right here in this A pillar. That's probably going to leave a mark, so that's going to need replacing. Underneath here, there's going to be a giant hole. So I can probably find a couple of pictures to see what that looks like, but there's going to be a giant hole left here. So that means this entire panel needs to be replaced. Another downside to a raised air intake is that you might think that the top of it, the ram head in this case, is the actual maximum limit that you can use for, uh, I don't know what I'm doing there, for actually going through a bog hole, river crossing, or whatever you're going to be using it for. Ah, take a look here. On this particular version of the Desno you know, raised air intake, you can see here that there are drainage holes and those are obviously for heavy rain and and all that stuff for dripping out so it doesn't actually get into your air box now of course once you lose momentum in a four-wheel drive your seals and everything are, are gone they're going to be compromised and therefore water rushes in and there'll be no different here especially if you manage to reach that that point now i would definitely be taking note when you purchase a raised air intake of what its limits and capabilities are some are obviously going to be better than others especially if you get a custom job because you can spend quite a bit of money on these things these days but you know there is a downside to it all right so i've mentioned a couple of negatives let's get on to the positives all right the very first positive with a raised air intake is it looks good it looks right and if you've got a four by four without it it kind of just feels too urban you know what I mean? At the end of the day, I've seen the meme before, uh, thou shalt not leave a four-wheel drive stock or something like that. I'll, I'll put it up there if I can see it. Because at the end of the day, you, you need to modify your four-wheel drive for your personal taste. It's one of those few vehicles out there that you can go out, hell for leather, and if you use it, you use it, uh, you, 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 you use it. But if you don't, you know, at least it looks like you can use it if you get the opportunity. So one of the positives and the first positive I'd say is that it looks good. What's another positive? Well, obviously it could be used for river crossings, bog holes, all those wonderful things. Cause it actually is, serves a functional purpose. That's what a raised air intake is for. So there are a couple of things you need to think about when you're choosing one. First, it has to be compatible with your vehicle. You just can't grab it from any old vehicle and slap it on. It's got to be fully sealed and contained so it doesn't let water in. And once you've done that, go hell for leather. So there you have it. Basically in a nutshell, it's a modification that you can take it or leave it. And we really need to answer one more question because at the end of the day, that's what I was asking. Do you need to spend money on a raised air intake? Obviously that's going to be up to an individual to answer that question. 
but really at the end of the day the positives and the negatives are laid out just as I have earlier. All right guys if you enjoyed that video please don't forget to jump on board and yes thank you so much don't forget the video a thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one of course I'm going to be diving on to do more videos in the future so it's probably a good idea to turn this wonderful thing grey. Thanks guys.